Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at gazelle.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 94 or as I like to call it, the best year to graduate high school that ever was. This is the show that covers the latest iPhone news, apps, tips, and tricks. I'm Sarah Lane, your friendly guide to all things iOS, and I'm not gonna talk about how I had that dream again last night about how I missed an entire semester of math class and I screwed myself and then couldn't graduate and was stuck in high school for all eternity. No, I'm not going to talk about that. Number one, so iOS got a very incredibly huge update yesterday, or at least we heard about what's gonna come this fall. That's when the iOS 8 rollout will come to all of us that aren't developers. We heard about it at Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference, also called WWDC yesterday. During the annual keynote address, it always happens on the first day of this whole week of developer goodness for Apple. Now we're not gonna go over every single thing that's new today because that would be a really, really long list, but I do wanna point out a couple things I'm really excited about and I think will make your lives better too. Number A, <laughs> a better iTunes for the whole family. Now, you know how sometimes you wanna use the same Apple ID across shared devices, but then there's the question of like, who's buying what and, and you've got sort of this merged account thing happening. iOS 8 will now have a new feature called family sharing. Up to six people in a family, or just six people, I guess, can share purchases from iTunes, iBooks, and the App Store without actually sharing their accounts, but still paying for purchases with the same credit card. Now, as a parent, you can also elect to get push notifications for approval anytime your kids want to download anything and spend your money from some of the devices that might be linked. You can also more easily share photos, your family calendar, and other stuff to keep everybody connected. Now, I don't actually share accounts with anybody. I'm just a family of one, unless you count my cats, but they don't have credit card privileges. But I know a lot of you do, so I think that this is pretty huge. Also, the Messages app is about to get better, besides the fact that Messages doesn't really sync with iMessage on OS X, but that's a whole nother gripe of mine. Messages is about to go head to head with the Facebook Messengers and the WhatsApps and the Snapchats with voice messaging that's sort of in line with text messaging, videos, better group chat functionality like muting a group chat that's too noisy for you without actually removing yourself or actually removing yourself from one once you've had enough. You can share your location from within messages now without having to jump over to the Find My Friends app. And then multiple photo sharing as well. You can just like share like 10 pictures to somebody right within your chat. So these are just a couple of things that stood out to me as really huge leaps forward for iOS that we will see fairly soon. We don't have a specific date, but we know it's going to be fall and we'll cover more of them in future episodes too. Number two. We got an email from Jen, who's a little confuddled about something. Jen writes, I was wondering if you could provide any information on how the save to reading list function works in the native Twitter app. Am I missing something? Where is the reading list? Can I save it to the list and then read it on my computer, which is slightly more conducive to reading long articles? Aha, the answer is yes. What you're referring to, Jen, the reading list that you're speaking of actually refers to a feature in Safari, mobile Safari for iOS, that the native Twitter app assumes you might want. So here's what you do. Instead of opening up a link while you're reading your Twitter timeline, you just say, save to reading list. Then at your leisure, and yes, this does work in Safari on multiple devices that sync Safari data, so iOS devices or your MacBook Pro, that sort of thing. You open up your reading list and there are those links that you saved from Twitter. I agree, it's a little confusing if you don't already know that this Safari feature is called reading list and you're in the Twitter app and you're like, where do I go? But now that you know, if you like to follow links that your Twitter friends are sharing, but you either don't like to do it within Twitter 
or don't have enough time, this is a great way to bookmark them for later. Number three, we got a Siri da tip from Adam coming to us from Tel Aviv, Israel. He writes, if you're using headphones that have a volume control button with a pause play button, you can use Siri by holding down on the pause play button for a couple of seconds. This feature is very useful, especially when making calls, changing songs or podcasts when you don't want to take out your phone. I agree, Adam. This is a great tip, especially because I know I'm not the only one who walks around with her phone in her purse and her headphones on all the time. That way, my hands are free. I can take calls, control music or podcasts, or yes, even talk to Siri on the fly. Hey Siri, look up Madonna. Okay. And remember, Siri the... isn't just about looking things up on the internet when you're out and about though. I'd say most of the time I'm setting reminders for myself or scheduling appointments while I'm you know, walking down the street and I know I'm gonna forget if I don't do it right then there. Once you get the syntax down, Siri's great for that stuff. This episode of iFi for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle. You know, we're getting to the point where we might wanna be thinking about those new iPads and new iPhones that are hopefully coming this fall. But what are you gonna do with your old iPhone or your old iPad or other device that you're just not using anymore? You know what you can do? You can give it to Gazelle and Gazelle will send you money. In fact, you can lock in your price today at Gazelle. And then when you get your new device, Gazelle's offer is good for 30 days. You just start getting rid of some of the stuff that's just laying around while you get ready for the stuff that you really do want. Gazelle makes selling your used gadgets really easy. You just go to gazelle.com, that's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com, and then you just type in your item. Maybe you got a bunch of different items, so you know, just go through them one by one. Tell Gazelle the condition that they're in. They'll even buy broken iPhones and iPads, so you know, you want to be honest about that. And then Gazelle will say, okay, here's what we're going to give you for these gadgets once you send them in. By the way, the shipping is free, and that uh, offer is risk-free because it's locked in for 30 days. You get paid fast within just a few days of sending in your devices and you get paid fast by check, by PayPal, or with an Amazon gift card for an extra 5%. Go to gazelle.com now and get that offer for your iPhone or iPad. You get paid in cash, Offers are good for 30 days. Gazelle will even wipe your data for free. It's really trustworthy. And the company has paid more than $100 million to over 700,000 happy customers, myself included. In fact, a lot of people at Twit have uh, gotten rid of our junk drawer full of gadgets because, you know, that's the kind of people we are. But don't hold on to that stuff. Get money for it. And that's what you can put towards your new purchase. Your iPhone 5, your Samsung Galaxy S3, your Apple iPad mini, 64 gigabyte, whatever it is, if you don't want it anymore, get some money for what you really do want. What's your iPhone worth or other gadget? Take a minute and go to gazelle.com and find out. But do it now because your gadgets may lose value the longer you wait. Number four. We don't talk about Google Plus enough here on i5, and that's not for any real reason, but it's about to change, okay? Google Plus got a big social update this week to its Stories functionality on iOS that brings it up to speed with the Android app for Google Plus, which is always usually a version or two ahead of us here on iOS. So here's what's new and cool. A much better photos and sharing experience. Now in Google Plus Stories, the app will combine your photos and your videos and places into what it calls beautiful trip summaries. There's also a new photo editor, has filters and other creative tools. And you can now view total content views on profiles from within the app for those of you who just love statistics and want to know who's seen what you're putting out there. So basically, Google wants you to use Google Plus for the long form and those content-rich posts. You can show off your latest vacation or, I don't know, a baby shower that you went to or, I don't know, maybe you've just got some, some thoughts that maybe you've got some photos that would go nicely with it or whatever you want to do to put together a nice story format. Google Plus has more tools than ever that you need. Also, as is everything Google, it's free. Well, almost everything. Number five, finally a question from Nicole in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And not finally a question from Nicole, I'm just saying this is our final five of five. She writes, I was getting caught up on your podcast and noticed in episode 93 that you said Chrome was your default browser. Now, I've been researching this and I can't find a way to make Chrome the default. That would be a dream come true. If it really is your default, 
how do you do this without jailbreaking your iPhone? Because I'm not going there. Well, yeah, Nicole, it's almost a little bit of a semantic thing, really, because what I meant was Chrome is the browser that I prefer, and Chrome is the browser that I have on my home page. Safari's in there somewhere. I don't know. I bury it on some other page. You can't actually make Chrome your default browser on the system level of iOS, which would mean that all of your links would always open in Chrome no matter which app you're clicking on them from. Apple's not going to let you do that. Not anytime soon anyway. However, if you use a lot of other Google apps, you can set those to default to Chrome when you hop over to the browser. And I guess for the most part, I don't really mind a Safari page here and there. I just feel more comfortable with Chrome most of the time. For my limited options, this works pretty well for me. I'm sorry, I don't have a magic solution. There really isn't one unless you want to jailbreak, and yeah, I stay away from that too. And that does it for this episode of i5. Hope you guys liked it. All of the app links and other info that we discussed on this entire show is at twit.tv slash i5. Email your ideas and questions and general feedback to i5 at twit.tv. You can always leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5 or send us a video or anything like that. We'll have more on what's coming up in iOS 8 next week. Until then, see ya.